For a conflict described by Amnesty International as the Forgotten War, Yemen has found itself in an unusual place over the past week, in the news. The reason for that is the assault by the combined forces of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates on the port city of Hodeidah. The UN already calls Yemen the world's worst humanitarian crisis, and that port is where Yemenis get 70% of their aid supplies. While it's the Saudi-led coalition that has waged this war from the air over the past three years, hitting multiple civilian targets, many media outlets describe Yemen as a proxy war, which is why you'll be familiar with the term Iran-backed Houthi rebels. But how much attention has been given to the United States and the United Kingdom, whose weapon sales and military assistance have enabled wealthy Gulf monarchies to wage war against the poorest country in the Middle East? For British and American journalists, that should make Yemen a foreign war with plenty of domestic angles. But you wouldn't know it from the kind of coverage and the overall lack of it. Our starting point this week is Hodeida. Troops are fighting to retake the key port city of Hodeida. The coastal city of Hodeida has been held by Houthis, backed by Iran. The return of the war in Yemen to news agendas has been long overdue. It took a new target, the port at Hodeida, to do it. They're trying to capture the city of 600,000 people, putting their lives at risk, but also putting the lives of 22 million people at risk who depend on that aid coming from Hodeida. Yemen has always been a forgotten story. It's been extremely difficult for international media to go to Yemen. How can you tell that story if you don't have people operating in those areas? And that, for me, is the biggest challenge when covering the military campaign against the Houthis in Yemen. I don't think the lack of coverage uh, is explained by the fact that it's difficult for journalists to get into the country. When there's an airstrike on a school, or a hospital, or a marketplace, or a home. I can find pictures of that because people in Yemen take pictures of that. That's not the problem. The problem is a, an unwillingness to show the US or UK role in the conflict. The Shiite Muslim Houthis, supported by Iran. On the role of outsiders, one of the most skewed representations in this conflict has been the Western media's constant use of the term Iran backed Houthi rebels. Iranian backed Houthi rebels. Iranian-backed rebels in Yemen. Iranian-aligned rebels in Yemen. This began as a civil war, Yemeni against Yemeni, in 2015. Within weeks, the Saudis, leading a military coalition of nine countries, intervened and made it regional. One of their justifications was that Iran was supporting the Houthi side. There was little or no evidence for that at the time. However, as the war dragged on, Iran's involvement has grown. Still, the support Tehran provides the Houthis pales in comparison to the backing the Saudis and the UAE get from Washington and London. Between them, since the war began, the US and the UK have sold more than $12 billion worth of weapons to the Saudis alone, including some of the warplanes and the payloads they drop. The American military also provides mid-air refueling for Saudi and UAE aircraft and both British and U.S. personnel assist the Saudis as they target their strikes, hundreds of which have killed civilians. Warplanes from a Saudi-led coalition are taking off for Yemen. But on the relatively rare occasions when Western news outlets actually cover the story, have they ever used the term U.S. and U.K.-backed Saudi and UAE forces? The conflict has been cast in ways that have been uh, very misleading to a U.S. or U.K. audience. People don't realize how involved our governments are in, in creating this catastrophe in Yemen. It's uh, construed as something that just is happening somewhere to people who are fighting each other. Where an already ugly war has metastasized and is grinding the ruins of life into dust. Casting it as a sectarian war and uh, more often uh, as a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran, which is completely misguided. The very latest from the fighting in Yemen now, that uh, proxy war really that's raging between Iran and Saudi Arabia. When you have coverage which doesn't really provide context, which 
doesn't really provide a proper understanding of the key actors in a conflict and also the role of our own governments. The publics are left with a sense of, of, of a confused conflict. What about Saudi air support, though, in terms of bombing Houthi positions? How helpful is that? Where it's not clear who's right or wrong, it's not clear whether or not we're involved in it. These are big political, uh, economic and military relationships which would cause uh, uh, increasing degrees of public dissent if people were fully aware of what's going on. And you've got to remember there is a close relationship between government officials and, and journalists. About two million Yemenis. It's not just the journalists involved, it's the media outlets they work for. CBS's news magazine program, 60 Minutes, is an American journalistic institution now in its 50th year on the air. Last year, it produced an extensive report on Yemen, going where most of the U.S. media have failed to go. We have managed to get pictures out of Yemen to show you what the Saudi government does not want you to see. Documenting the humanitarian catastrophe and openly criticizing Saudi Arabia. The report was 13 minutes long, but there was not a single mention of the U.S. role in the conflict, the weapon sales or the military and logistical support. Not one. MSNBC is a 24-hour news channel Americans consider to be on the liberal side of the political spectrum. In 2017, the network produced exactly one news report on Yemen. One. MSNBC had 8,760 hours of airtime to fill last year. The total time it devoted to the Yemen story and the American angle in it, three minutes and seven seconds. Now, if you don't know what country I'm talking about, maybe that is because we in the American press don't cover it very much. The fact that MSNBC refuses to cover Yemen just goes to show you that support for the Saudis uh, and the Emiratis in the United States is, is not just a liberal or a conservative policy. The fact that journalists are not scrutinizing it more just demonstrates that in American media culture, it really is okay to devalue the lives of people in the Middle East and the people that the United States tramples on to obtain its policy goals. I also think that it's a really shocking failure of journalists to push back on the government's own narratives. Even apparently critical journalists on MSNBC um, become very reluctant to cover those issues. They mark out the boundaries of legitimate debate in a very significant way. Time and time again, uh, when we look at media reporting of conflicts in the case of Vietnam, and then really all the conflicts you have since then, the same pattern has emerged. So this is the biggest one you have? You bet. They are beautiful pictures of fearsome armaments. The liberal left not actually getting to the heart of the really important big issues when it comes to high foreign policy and war. There's a bigger picture at play in Yemen than most of the coverage from the outside world would have you believe. Broader power struggles that bedevil the Middle East. It's not just about Iran, ISIS or Al-Qaeda. Nor is the lack of coverage solely about the lack of access. There's more to it than that. And however you frame it, media outlets that give the story the short, simplistic shrift are letting their viewers, as well as millions of Yemenis, down. If you go back to the last 20 years, international media would travel to Yemen. Al-Qaeda first struck a U.S. target in Yemen in 2000. Just to cover stories related to uh, Al-Qaeda's presence in Yemen. Apart from that, it was really never on the radar screen of the international media. Suddenly, it was summed up to this fight against a proxy militia used by the Iranians to further destabilize the region. That's not true. We're 17, 18 years into a series of very major conflicts in the international system following 9-11. And these conflicts have been in a very significant way driven by Western governments and their regional allies. And really it's, it's very, very important that we now start to sort of encourage awareness and understanding that we're not observing a series of disparate, discrete conflicts and so on. We actually have a broader drive from Western governments and their Gulf state allies in order to shore up their control and influence in the region. This explains why people sometimes don't get the story. Why is this happening and who's backing who and what are the agendas there in Yemen? I've been covering Yemen for the last 15 years and people would always tell me the West does not care about us as Yemenis. 
they don't care anymore about Yemen.